Hey everyone, what is up? Today's day 28 of the Zero Starving 30 Day Challenge. And today we're gonna to go over Snipcart, another e-commerce solution we could use in our website. Yesterday we went over how to add the Shopify like button to our website. And so I just wanna give you another option. They are both great options, very similar in price, but each do have a few different options. So I personally am going to choose Snipcart because of the subscription feature. That's also available in Shopify, but it's also another add-on on top of that, another $20 a month to make it $30 a month plus any extra fees. So it does start to get a lot more money depending on what type of features you need in your website. So you've probably heard of Shopify before, but you probably haven't heard of Snipcart. It's a much smaller company. There's only a handful of developers, but they're very focused on one thing, and that's creating a great checkout experience for static websites. They don't have any hosted version. They don't have to worry about other apps like Shopify does. They're just focused on the checkout process and making it simple for coders, developers, or people like us that are just learning how to code to make it easy to add a checkout to our website, no matter what type of website it is. So the awesome thing about both these options is that no matter what website you're using, whether you're using a static website like we built, or you're using WordPress or Squarespace or literally anything, as long as you know where to put this code, then you can add Shopify buy button or the Snipcart buy button to your website. So me personally, I've used both options on different sites for both clients and for myself. So I highly recommend both of them. But like I said, go through the features and figure out what you really need. What's your core offering on your website and what kind of type of feature do you really need in that checkout process in order to be successful. So just like the Shopify buy button, we have to add a few lines of code and there's actually less code in the Snipcart option. We have to add the script tag from Snipcart which is gives us the ability to have a checkout and then just the buy button. So in Shopify we had the option to pull in an image, some a title, a description and a price or just the buy button or an image and the buy button. In Snipcart, on the other hand, we only have the option for a buy button. So that gives us a little more flexibility in how we wanna portray our product, but it also means we have to do a little bit more work, which isn't a huge deal because we already learned how to add images, text, and align those different images and text on different screen sizes. So it's just, we're gonna treat it the same as we did any other div or H1 tag or P tag that we did on the rest of our website, but instead it's gonna have a product this time. So another major difference between the two is Shopify's checkout looks very nice without having to do anything to it. And you know if you use the Shopify buy button, your customer's not gonna have any issues checking out because Shopify has streamlined the process of users checking out. They could save information so that when they come back, it's just one click away, they have different options. But the downside to that is you can't change it at all. So the reason why it works so well is because it can't be modified at all, you can't add any other fields. Whereas Snipcart, at first, it doesn't look as nice, but you can customize it however you like. You could have a popover, you could have another page, you could have a sidebar that pops out, but that adds a little extra work. And you could look, you could change the flexibility and you could change the look of it of the Snipcart one as much as you can, but Shopify, you're stuck with how it looks which isn't a bad thing because it does look really nice. So I would just keep that in mind. If you need to add extra fields to the checkout process, then you probably want to go with Snipcart. If you just have regular product and you just want to treat it just like any other e-commerce website, then maybe Shopify is your option. So take a look at the needs you have in your website to choose the one that works best for you. But today we're going to go through and add the Snipcart version to our website to show you the differences between the two and show you how to get up and running with both options. Yesterday we went through and added our Shopify buy button to our website to add a product via Shopify. But now today we're gonna to go through and do the same thing with Snipcart. And like I briefly mentioned, I picked Snipcart for my overall website because that it featured subscriptions out of the box. So subscriptions came with the $10 a month fee with Snipcart. Meanwhile, if you wanted subscriptions in Shopify, you have to have an add-on. So you have the initial fee of $9 a month plus an extra $20 a month for the add-on plus a percentage per purchase. So it was a lot more expensive and it can get a lot more expensive than $30 a month or $20 plus other extra fees. So that's why I went with Snipcart. It also is a lot easier to use. So if we go to snipcart.com, this is more for people that know how to code. So if you've never heard of 
people comparing Snipcart to Shopify or to WooCommerce, it's because it's for a different type of person that knows different things. You can't just go in and add it to a site without a little coding knowledge. And so that's why we learned just enough to get our website up and running. And so this will be a lot easier. It'll just be a copy and paste and changing some values in order to get it working on our own website. I mean, you have discounts, different payment gateways, you could do real goods. This is the main one, recurring and subscriptions because we have a subscription-based model, abandoned carts, digital goods. This comes naturally, it's not another add-on. And then a merchant dashboard, which we will also get up and running. So we're gonna sign up. So now for Snipcart to sign up, unlike Shopify, all we have to do is add our email address. Uh, you can see that Snipcart is free forever in test mode. That's a big difference between Shopify because in Shopify, it's a free 14 day trial. And after that, whether you're in test mode or not, it'll start charging you. And then for both, you don't need a credit card to get started. But there's also a lot less fields you have to fill out. So we're just gonna sign up for free. And then we have to verify an email. So to sign up, once we verify our email address, all we do is fill out our email, create a password, and then put our domain. And here's our dashboard, very similar type of layout to Shopify, a little more simpler, but it gives you all the information you really need when you first come to the page. You can see how many orders you placed, how much money in sales you have, the average order value, how many customers are new versus returning, a bunch of different stats. And so we're gonna go to next, and you can see that test mode is always free. So we're gonna make sure it's in test mode and you can see you go in between both. So in test mode versus live mode, you'll have two different API keys. So I'll show you that in a second. And then I'm just gonna click through and get started. So before we start filling out this profile information, I'm gonna go through the dashboard. So we already went through the dashboard. There's a bunch of stats. You can see a chart, customers. So everything is right here. Same thing as Shopify, you have orders. This is a little bit different, subscriptions. So like for me, this is huge. Subscriptions are included. And then abandoned carts and recovery emails. So actually they must have just made this a pro feature like this week. So uh, customers, anyone that signs up for an email or places an order automatically become a customer. You have discounts in both Shopify and Snipcart and then adding products. So instead of adding products in the back end like you do in Shopify, in Snipcart, you actually just create it in the code, and then once you upload that live, it'll search your code and automatically create products. So you always, you don't have to update it in both the code and the back end like you do in Shopify. Here you just do it in the code, and it'll automatically fetch. So you can see it'll put your URL, and it'll fetch out new products, and then you also have digital goods as well. So in order to get started, you have to click this little, you can see this exclamation point. It has a couple steps you have to do in order to get started. So it'll tell you, you have to add the JavaScript file to your website to get it running. You have to set up the billing, just like you do in Shopify, to get it running. And then you have to configure payment gateways. So this is a little more clear of the steps you have to take in order to get started versus Shopify. So we're gonna start with our JavaScript file. So this section is where it tests to make sure the JavaScript file is in your code, but where do we get the actual file? So if we click on this profile section, it has an account section with the payment gateway, so you have to fill this out if you want to get up and running. Domains, URLs, orders, checkout cart. If we go down to API keys, and this is our public API key. So you can see that if jQuery is already included in your site, you should not include it twice. So like I was saying, this is why another reason why we switched from plain JavaScript to jQuery, because there's a lot of add-ons that if you want to use that require jQuery anyway, and just because it's easier to use. So if we already have it on our site, we might as well get used to using it. So since we already have that, we're going to add these two lines of code. And so just like in Shopify, it's adding a outside script from Snipcart and putting in our API key. So when I mention API key, this is what we change when we change from testing to live. 
So it's going to be two different keys. You can place orders on the test key and see them in the UI. And then if you see everything's working correctly, you can change it to live and then just change out the, the key and everything you do from now on will actually charge your credit card. So that's a nice little feature to start testing out. And like I said, that's free forever, so you don't have to worry about getting charged after 14 days like you do in Shopify. So we're gonna copy and paste these two lines of code and go over to our code. And we're just gonna add it to the top of the page. So once we add these two lines of code, we're gonna to wanna to save it and then add it to our live site so that we could go in and check that it's there within Snipcart. So the reason we're doing this is just, this won't do anything, won't add any products. It's so that we could go and validate it. So if we go to validate, so if we type in damngoodbrew.co, so successful, our code is, our API key is in the code and we can start adding products and it'll start finding them. So a great thing to check out for Snipcart is the documentation. Shopify has some documentation, but it's kind of all over the place and you can't really find what you're looking for. This has a step-by-step -step process on how to get started. So we already signed up. We just included the Snipcart JavaScript and CSS files. So these are the same files we have, but instead of, we put our own API key. And the next thing we have to do is define our product. So this is all the code that's required to create a product. So if we just copy and paste this as an example, and let's go all the way down. So this was all the code that we used for Shopify, a little bulky. And this is all we need for Snipcart. This will also this also means that it's just the button. So in Shopify we had the option to pull in an image, a description, a price, and the button. Here it's just the button. You have to add everything else in statically. So we just have to add an image like we would anywhere else on our website. Just like we added an image right here, add some text, and just have that for a product. So right there, right now, this is just a button. So we could see that actually working if we put in damngoodbrew.co and we'll just keep everything like it is right now. So once we add that and push it to our GH pages branch so that it's live, we're going to go check it out. So we're going to go to damngoodbrew.co and there's actually going to be an error and curious if you could find out before I check it out. So we're going to press the buy button but nothing happened. So if we do inspect and then check out the console we got lots of red which is not good. So it says jQuery is not defined. So we had the same issue in an earlier lesson where it was looking for a file that wasn't there and it was jQuery. And that's because we have all the way at the top, we have our script file, which requires jQuery. Our CSS is fine up there. That doesn't need jQuery. But our jQuery needs to load before our snip cart file. So now if we reload that, and we check it out again, it's actually working. So we have a cart, we have some bacon, some fresh bacon, and we added one item, and we can do a checkout, and here's the checkout process. So everything, it doesn't even leave the screen, doesn't reload at all, and this may look a little ugly compared to Shopify because Shopify is a very nice looking website or very nice looking checkout process, but this is super customizable. So this is the very bare bones of what's required. You can customize this however you like to look exactly like the rest of your website. So you can see some of our styles are actually even taking hold already. This, all the brown icons, that's usually it's all white, but since we have brown styling throughout our whole website, we're forcing it 
then these take on those same capabilities. So you could style things however you like, move them around. You could even have the same type of sidebar cart like we do in Shopify, but you just have to build it out. So you could remove this down here, snip cart. You do really whatever you want. So there's a lot more flexibility, but you also have to do a little bit more work because like you see, all we have is the button. So we have to go in and add an image, a price, and a description, which isn't that big a deal because we've done it up here. It's basically doing the same thing you would right here. You could turn this into a product and put the title and the button right here and add whatever this product is. So it's super flexible and you could add it to any page you'd like. Just make sure you have the jQuery and the correct JS on each page. So if you want to add this to your blog, just make sure you add the scripts of jQuery and the Snipcart script. As, as well as the CSS, unless you create your own CSS for the cart. So there we go. We added our snip cart button and it's adding products to our cart. And like I said, you could test this forever if you like and not have to pay, which is awesome considering you only have 14 days with Shopify. And it's super, super flexible. Add some features that doesn't come natively to Shopify. So they each have their positives and negatives, but it depends on what product you're selling, what service you're selling, depends on which one you wanna pick for your own website.